These are times Family Guy side characters carried the show. Number 1. It's pretty terrifying to know that Elmer Hartman is the only doctor in the series, given that he seemingly has no medical degree or any knowledge of how to talk to his patients. My goodness, you'll be dead within a month. What? what? Oh, Hagar the Horrible, if you keep up that lifestyle of pillaging and giant turkey legs, you'll be dead within a month. Dr. Hartman's terrible delivery consistently scares the Griffins, who only went in for a simple physical for Peter. But now, on to the cancer. <laughs> oh my god. You are a cancer, right? You were born in July? Thankfully, Hartman does eventually get to the end diagnosis, which isn't as dire as some of the things he mentioned. Nevertheless, it still offends Peter. Is Peter healthy? Oh yeah, he's fine. He's just really fat. Oh, thank God. Wait, wait, wait. Hang, hang, hang on a second. Did you just say I was fat? Number two. To avoid paying Lois's hospital bill, Peter declares himself deceased on the insurance form, resulting in death himself coming to pay a visit. Come on, man. Which one is Peter Griffin? Uh, this is Peter Griffin. <laughs> hey, that's a good one. <laughs> to get himself out of dying, Peter agrees to temporarily take the role of death, with the task of restoring the natural order of life and death. You're gonna have to do something that will get everyone's attention, something huge. How about if you blow up the Earth? Too huge, but you're thinking, I like that. You could kill all the girls who are prettier than me. Well, that would just leave England. He's assigned to kill the cast of Dawson's Creek while they are on a flight, but he refuses. However, he does accidentally kill the two pilots, which proves enough for Death, who leaves satisfied. We're gonna miss you, Death. Hey, don't worry. I'll be back really, really soon. <laughs> Is he joking? <laughs> okay, see you later. Number three, Tom Tucker has been an integral part of the Quahog News team for years, but a new younger reporter threatens his position. Since he arrived, our ratings have skyrocketed. They're grooming Dallas, which means I'm on my way out. With it looking more and more likely that he's going to be replaced by his younger counterpart, Tom goes to the roof of his apartment block, preparing to do the worst. If I can't anchor the local news, I have no reason to live. Look, Tom, Tom, before you do anything crazy, you should know one thing. I have that exact same bathrobe. When Dallas joins the pair, looking for his latest story, Peter selflessly takes Tom's place so that the seasoned anchor can have the biggest story and best chance of winning his job back. Tom was just trying to talk me down. And if there's a news story here, the only one I'm giving it to is Tom Tucker. Here. Roll it. Number four, you couldn't have Tom Tucker without his chief field reporter, Trisha Takanawa. When Peter brings her some information about Lois's father and the brewery, she sees an opportunity to report it. Also, some of the brewery workers say very hurtful things if a co-worker wears shorts. Follow the money. Mr. Griffin, it sounds like you've brought me an interesting story. What should I do with it, Ollie? Make it news! Trisha goes undercover to try and get closer to Carter and uncover the truths about his new ownership of the brewery. God, you're gorgeous. Mr. Pewterschmidt, I remind you, this is on the record. You ever been with a man who's got a prostate the size of a beefsteak tomato? She finally breaks down his walls and gets him to reveal the truth about using toxic materials in the beer cans to save money. Exactly what I wanted to hear. Thank you, Carter. And there you have it, Channel 5 News audience. Number 5. Jillian is by far one of the most memorable girlfriends that Brian has had. Even Stewie falls in love with her when they meet. Hi, Brian. Oh my god, who's your cute little friend? Oh my. Hello, Stewie. Chom. I'm Jillian. Her bubbly personality is contagious, and Stewie can't fathom why Brian is embarrassed to introduce the two. That is, until she starts talking about a recent documentary she saw. I was watching something on TV about this guy named Hitler. <gasps> Somebody should stop him. Are her parents brother and sister? Safe to say, Jillian has a few screws loose, but her heart is in the right place. It doesn't stop Stewie from having a ton of fun at Brian's expense, though. I want some more of Jillian's delicious lemonade. I know, it's good, right? I just wish they didn't have to kill so many lemons to make it. Oh, this is fun, huh? <sighs> Number six, Carter Pewterschmidt has always been a stubborn man, and it's that exact attitude that gets him injured while at the shopping mall. You're going to get hurt doing that. No, I'm not. I'm the champ at doing this. Ow! You jinxed me! Ah, oh, damn it! Hey, call that beeping cart that carries around the fat black people. Since his wife is out of town, Chris is tasked with looking after his grandpa, even when it comes to some uncomfortable problems. And the worst part about it is I can't have God, I wish there was a way I could just do it myself. You know, just, just to be done and napping within four minutes. Let me show you something. 
he has such a good time with Chris that he offers to pay him once he's healed. But Chris declines, stating that he was just happy to spend time with his grandpa. As a reward for his refreshing attitude, Carter makes him sole heir to his fortune. Daddy, you're seriously leaving your entire estate to Chris? I mean, what about mom? I promise she'll be dead before I am. I promise. Number 7. When Peter goes to buy condoms from Goldman's pharmacy, Mort informs him that he already has a heft tab to pay. Peter, it's the end of the month and I'm calling your tab. You owe me $34,000. What? Oh man, how am I gonna come up with that kind of money? Mort doesn't take it easy on him, but the pair do come to an unlikely agreement on how to pay off the tab. You can't sell me, you fat son of a Whoa, careful getting this fish off the hook, Mort. She's got some fangs. <laughs> what do you think of that, Neil? Daddy bought you a girlfriend. Even though he purchased Meg for his son, he doesn't use her in the exact way you'd be expecting. Boy, this was a better acquisition than I thought. We may even be able to put in some sorghum this year. Number 8. The Griffin's housekeeper, Consuela's slow and monotone voice can make the simplest of things hilarious, like when Peter tries to give her his phone number. Four. Four zero. Four. Four zero. No, no, I was just repeating the four. The language barrier proves to be an issue, as Consuela struggles to understand the order of the numbers. One, five, five. No, no, not one, one, and two fives, two ones. Two, one. One, one, two, five. Oh my god. When they painfully get her to the point of understanding what the phone number was, it turns out that she wasn't even equipped to receive it. One, one, two, five. Yes, one, one, two, five. All right, now read the number back to me. L let me get my pen. Number nine. To help her get into university, Meg signs up to work for the school newspaper and lands her first interview with none other than Mayor Adam West. See, I need to interview you. And You're with the press? Yes. Well, you can't interview a dead man, can you? He continues to try to escape the Griffin girl, but eventually she catches up to him and he agrees to talk to her. Young lady, I don't talk to the press under any circumstances. What makes you think I'll talk now? This. You just don't give up, do you? It's only during her interview that Meg realizes the mayor might not be the brightest bulb as he freaks out over a tap. Can you just please- My God! Somebody's stealing my water. It just went down the drain. They're crafty, I tell you. It happens when you least expect it. Number 10. It's a recipe for disaster when Peter and Lois leave the kids in the care of Herbert. A creepy old man with a questionable appetite. No cussing, clean your plates, and only a half hour of radio and then it's off to bed. Well, that sucks. And don't you mouth off to me or I'm gonna slap you right in your Herbert has always openly flirted with Chris, and he takes full advantage of sharing the same house as him. It's bath day for me, but I can't wash myself. Know anybody with a pair of strong young hands to help me in and out of the tub? But his advances become even too much for Chris, who finally asks the question on all of our minds. Are you a-